Hey everyone, welcome. It's been a while, but uh, trying to get back into the swing of things with some uh, videos. This was one that was requested on Twitter, so I thought I'd uh, get back in the game and uh, get back to some of the old style videos that I used to make. So let's uh, get into it. What is VE33 and how does it work? So it's basically VE33 is a, I guess, like a tokenomics model that you ascribe for uh, a token. Um, it sounds really cryptic, but it makes more sense once you actually understand the mechanics. So let's start off by understanding what is VE in the first place. So when you think about a typical, say, token that exists out there, there's basically the total supply, which let's say might be uh, 1 billion. And then you have the circulating supply, which might be something like uh, 100 million. Now the problem is that this circulating supply is basically what can be bought and sold on the market. And if the circulating supply increases, then you kind of have to figure out like, well, who's gonna be the net buyer and seller of these tokens? So ideally, you want there, want there to be a lot of buyers and ideally not many sellers. But what would be really great is if you can actually remove the circulating supply so there's not that many buyers and sellers in the first place that can uh, change the price or also just require, a lot, require that much more liquidity to sustain. If I have 100 million tokens priced at, say, uh, $1, at one dollar basically you've got a hundred million dollars worth of an asset that you need to bas basically be able to support liquidity for and that can be very expensive so that's like one problem the second is that if these so-called tokens have any sort of voting rights uh, associated with them so typically you have like one token equals one vote um, in a lot of these like crypto on-chain governance systems so as soon as you have voting rights, it gets a bit tricky um, because suddenly you have people that can say, uh, b like buy or rent the tokens very uh, for a short amount of time or very cheaply, and then vote to skew, um, I guess, the decision in like whatever uh, direction they want. And then the other thing around, I guess, like standard token models is there's no real incentive to like hold the token necessarily. Um, and even if there is staking, often what you'll find is that uh, if the staking yield is the native token of whatever the system is, you kind of have the yield which gets distributed out to the user and then it gets sold back into the market. So it kind of becomes not very useful for the system because it benefits uh, extractive players who are willing to sell the yield. This is assuming it's in the governance token. Sometimes it's pure USDC, but that's not necessarily always the case. So that being said, that's kind of like a quick backdrop. In terms of what is VE, uh, VE is basically a token model pioneered by the Curve Finance folks back in 2020. So uh, yeah, three years ago. So the whole, whole idea around VE is that you have your token, and I'm gonna use this purple thing with lines through it to demonstrate a token, and you basically lock it up um, in the system, uh, which is called, which uh, is stand, like is VE'd effectively, but VE stands for vote escrowed. And the whole idea is you can choose to lock up your tokens for as short as one week up to four years. Now, what's really cool is the mo longer you decide to lock up your tokens for, the more voting rights you get in uh, the protocol itself, and you get a larger uh, proportion of the tokens that get distributed back to uh, vote locked users. So basically what you're saying is if I'm willing to be more longer term orientated in this protocol, uh, the protocol will say, well, I'm going to give you more rewards because you're taking away more circulating supply out of the system, but also just demonstrating your loyalty uh, 
to the protocol and showing you not mercenary or here for the short term, uh, I guess, benefits. So that's kind of how VE works at a high level. Now, there's a few problems with the VE tokens, and we'll kind of cover that next. I'm going to use a different color to explain that. Uh, let's go orange. Cool. So uh, the problem with VE tokens. So this one issue, as soon as you lock up your token, you get this VE token. Uh, it's basically non-transferable, which is good because like we don't want the whole point was to remove tokens out of the circulating supply but um it means that you can't uh really like transfer them at all to another wallet uh if you do want to trade them in like very cer certain circumstances of course not with full liquidity you can't at all um and also you can't lend and borrow against your locked up tokens so it creates a disincentive for people to lock up their tokens in the system in the first place so that's one issue, um, but I would say it's more of like a minor thing. The larger bit that I want to touch upon is inflation schedules. So, for example, with Curve, um, they have this token which has an inflation schedule that looks something like this, more or less, in a very abstract sense. Um, and when the system starts, it's got this many tokens, but when it ends, it will approach some sort of cap in, let's say that's a billion. Now, it gets a bit strange because what happens is if I lock up my tokens um, at different points in the curve, I'm, well, as long as I lock up my token any time, tokens any time before this point in time, I'm basically getting diluted because there are constant new tokens being emitted uh, based on the slope of the curve itself. So that's kind of one issue. But the second is like, how do you actually know whether you're giving enough tokens or not, or whether you don't actually need to like, create that many inflationary tokens? Because the whole point of inflation is to attract new users to the system. Um, but sometimes you actually don't need to necessarily. Also, uh, part of the inflation goes to the VE holders, but it's not a perfect science at the end of the day. So or there's a lot of variants that like the protocol designers can come up with. So this is kind of like where the VE33 element of this comes in. So we're going to like basically use an example where uh, I made some notes. Yep, cool. So we have some token with 100 million tokens in circulation. And for our example, there's 1 million tokens uh being created or minted every week um, and this is to attract users based on the yield so that's kind of at a high level the mechanics of it now in ve33 the way that it works is if i'm a user and i lock up my token into let's draw a new box this is the the e three three box um oh, and our little token with our lines through it uh once you lock it up you first of all you actually get an nft that marks uh your deposit inside the system so because it's an nft this means you can still trade it of course not with full liquidity because nfts are traditionally quite illiquid but you can lend against it uh, and you can basically still have access to your capital that's locked up, which is quite neat. But uh, there's actually a bigger play um, at hand here. So let's say uh, there is now... Uh, what's an example that makes sense? Yeah, cool. Let's roll with a million tokens. Um, are being minted and let's suppose for a second that 50 percent of these tokens um are uh, deposited inside ve through there or they're basically like vote escrowed so what actually happens is because uh 50 percent sorry because you have essentially uh ah oh, okay sorry i was trying to figure out like what is going wrong in this whole equation so there's one key variable i forgot to add um 
in this whole thing, we're going to assume that 50 million uh, tokens in circulation are actually already uh, locked in the system. Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was missing. So assuming 50% are already locked in circulation, that means 50% of the circulating supply is locked slash off the market. Now, what this actually means is that the inflation will basically go down from 1 million tokens down to 0 0.5 million tokens a week. So this is really neat because now you have your inflation only being created for the amount that it needs to incentivize out of the supply that hasn't locked up their tokens, not minting a lot of unnecessary tokens. But the other really cool bit here is that so if we're assuming 0 0.5 million tokens are being minted a week, that means there's basically 0.5% of the 100 million is being inflated. So in order to protect the users who have uh, locked their tokens off the market from inflation effectively, uh, these VE locked users will actually have their um, VE balance increased by 0.5% uh, a week or whatever the nominal inflation rate is of the system. So suddenly you have this really cool system where if I'm a user who uh, believes in the project long term, A, I get an NFT that lets me do some more sophisticated things with my locked up capital, but also more importantly, I am actually being compensated by not being diluted in the system because I'm getting a proportion of uh, however many new tokens are being created. And also it's getting healthier for the system because the system is gonna actually start printing less tokens. So going back to our earlier example in like curve where you kind of have the static curve, in this new system, what actually happens is like, you might project your curve to be like that, but if let's say you can really incentivize people to uh, lock up their tokens as early as possible in the life cycle of the protocol, you can actually end up with something that kind of looks like that, which means that uh, the inflation might be really high for a shorter period of time, and then it tapers off very quickly. Or uh, you might even have a graph that kind of just looks like that, which is beautiful, <laughs> um, but it really depends. So at least like this kind of explains the dynamics of how this V33 is more or less like a few like minor optimizations that makes the greater system uh, more efficient at the end of the day and also locks certain user benefits such as like uh, being able to mint the NFT. Anyway, that's really about it for this. I um, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Sorry for the little confusion uh, in the middle. I was trying to figure out like what had gone wrong. I basically made notes as well, but uh, <laughs> I guess this is what happens when you uh, haven't kind of been in the game for a bit. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy this. Let me know if you want to see anything else and Look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye.